Our final designer is Sir Terence Conran. He's the designer's designer, whose work has been at the forefront of British design for the past six decades. And he has used his success to benefit the design industry as a whole. I've got more work now than I've ever had in my life. And here I am at the age of 85, who should be putting down the pencil and saying, come on, to young, young designers, you get on with it. As busy as he is, he occasionally finds the time to relax in the garden of his estate in Wiltshire. And he always finds the time to enjoy a Cuban cigar, preferably Hoya de Montre Epicure No. 2. Designs by the founder of Habitat have always been in demand. Even an ashtray he designed for one of his upmarket restaurants triggered a crime spree. I heard that 10,000 of those ashtrays were stolen from the Paglinos. Is that correct? I think it was more like 100,000. Seriously? A gigantic quantity. When the first Habitat store opened in Chelsea in 1964, it was at home in the cultural revolution of the 60s. Designs for home furnishings acquired an elegance and affordability it never dared aspire to. Habitat was really cool when I was young. What Habitat offered was what seemed to be modern design that was not like the sort of stuff you'd grown up with, which by and large before that furniture was big and it was dark and it was drab. Habitat wasn't really selling furniture. Habitat was selling a modern lifestyle. If Britain had a ministry of taste, it would no doubt be headed by Sir Terence Conran. Do you see yourself as creating British taste or shifting British taste? I think gradually moving it, bringing it gently along. Terence Conran would build a high street empire on the design philosophy of plain, simple and useful. The intelligence of a designer will go into uh, shaping that product and making it a product that they, uh, that people, I believe, will enjoy more than a product that hasn't had that same uh, consideration given to it. Flat-packed furniture was another stroke of brilliance. It kept costs down and brought couples closer together as they fought to assemble their new furniture. When you were a young person living in a bedsit or a flat, Habitat offered you an opportunity, as it were, to in reinvent yourself as a creature of a new world. Terence Conran introduced millions to modern design for their kitchens, living rooms and bedrooms. Habitat was responsible for introducing Britain to the duvet and I understand that it may have had an impact on our sex lives. Would you take some credit for the way we, our sex lives have changed with the introduction of the well, duvet? I'm always fascinated by the duvet story because it was such a success. Irene's here to tell us all about duvets, and there she is in Kip, <laughs> as lovely and as clean and friendly as Bexhill on Sea. <laughs> Isn't he a cheeky monkey? Well, this is a duvet. The duvet became a bedroom hit in a new era of sexual liberation. I'd been staying in Austria, and I'd been put to bed with a duvet and thought, Oh, this is jolly nice. Why don't we have them in England? So we brought in the duvet, and in our habitat catalogues, we did this extremely good picture of a man making the bed with a duvet while his girlfriend was making herself up in a mirror in a dressing table. And we had a little caption that said, 20 seconds to make a bed. <laughs> And it just worked, and you know, every young person at that time wanted a duvet, and I do think it had perhaps something to do with their sex life as well. 
because it was relaxed and a bit abandoned. So you made a lot of us late for work. It's the latest coup by the millionaire creator of Habitat, Sir Terence Conran. His retailing empire is worth more than £650 million. Pounds. When Habitat, the company I'd built, became a public company, I had a lot of money. Terence Conran has been the godfather to the new and the original design museum, which was founded in 1989. I had a sort of patriotic urge. <laughs> Conran brought funding and a personal vision to introduce Britain to an international design perspective. I felt it was very important that British designers and British manufacturers should understand the world. Ten years ago, I was hired by Terence and the other trustees of the museum with a brief to move the museum somewhere bigger, more accessible, where we could do more things. And he's been a constant presence behind my shoulder saying, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? A donation of £17 million by Terence Conran also helped to make the new design museum a reality. I still get this real excitement and something that you worked on and thought about for many years actually becomes a reality. Making things, I think, is very much at the root of design.